you know, every three weeks, every three weeks, I get it right. So there we go. So we are recording now. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Um, for those of you that may not know me, my name is Nate. I work for Northwest RPDP. And today we're going to be looking at um, using data and how to collect data and then also how we can use data. Now, our focus is going to be with Google Forms and Google Sheets. But I want to uh, let you know, we're not going to be doing any, um, you know, like super heavy duty. Um, we have a spreadsheet with 20,000 rows or anything like that. This is more how we might use it in a classroom with students. So I hope that it's useful for you. I was kind of mentioning at the beginning as we were starting, um, to be honest with you, spreadsheets were something I kind of never used as much. But now I'm really getting into them and I'm seeing a lot more use. So I hope that today's introduction to spreadsheets and forms could be useful for you as well and encourage you to continue, you know, looking and, and learning. So I think I'm going to begin uh, by talking. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now and we're going to we're going to get right down to business. OK, so um, if you would like. Um, I'm going to put a link in the chat box, and this is just an outline to or a link to the outline of some of the topics we'll be going over today. So I hope that that might be helpful for you. Um, as always, Ashley is going to be my moderator in uh, Lander County. And if you have a question as we are going through, then just please um, Type it in the chat box and Ashley will let me know. Okay. So before we begin, let's talk about um, actually getting data, right? I mean, we're not talking about, you know, getting huge spreadsheets of all kinds of things. We're talking about asking kids questions and, and using data inside of our classroom to make our, our life easier and also to uh, help kids kind of visualize data and see how they can use it. So, the most basic and useful way that, that I think with kids we can get data is by making a quick Google form. So I'm in my Google Drive, and if I, uh, if I were to just click New and go to the bottom where it says More, these are in alphabetical orders or whatever orders. So the first one that pops up is always Google Forms, right? And so if you just click that, you're going to get a blank form. And these are very uh, easy to fill out and um, you know a quick way to get data. Now just for our purpose, I'm going to pull a, a form over that I created this morning just for this uh, presentation, right? So I want you to imagine I'm in a maybe a science class or things like that. People sometimes will get the missing the miss the improper impression that a spreadsheet or data is all the time just going to be in math. But actually, we can use it in a lot of different ways. And so I wanted to use something different here. Um, talking, This could be, you know, talking about maybe social studies, right? Like clean water is, is a, a big topic in a lot of places in the world, or maybe science or ecology or something like that, right? So I have the basic form already created here. And it is, um, you know, it's just there, ready for, it's just here for anyone to fill out, right? You could see that I just used on all of mine short answers so that students could type in a number. I gave some brief instructions on the top. And we're actually going to practice with this, okay? So I'm going to put uh, the link into our into our chat box and i'm going to invite everybody yes can i enlarge it okay yes Could i can you please enlarge. enlarge your screen yes i you, will you enlarge knew it. it was coming didn't you <laughs> i knew yeah i i got there i was like oh it's got it enlarge okay how's that hey, all right there's perfect okay good yeah especially when we get into the spreadsheet and we have those small cells that's going to be important. So I put the link in the spreadsheet. You're going to get there and you're going to see what a student experience would be like. 
this is a great, you know, imagine you're having this discussion with students. It's one thing just to talk about it, but what we're going to do is we're going to get some real data and make it relatable to them by asking uh, how much water gets used in their house. So go ahead and click on that link, if you will, and give it a shot. I mean, let's, um, let's see if we can get a few responses in there. Uh, hang on. Oh my goodness, Jacqueline, J-A-C-K, La Riva. How come I can't find you? Why is your name not popping up? It's cool up with the Okay, so I see that my responses are coming, which is awesome. I see I've got three. I think I'll wait till I get like maybe 15-ish or something like that. No, Landry. Teresa. Carrie Jo. Boom. Okay. So if we get a few more people to fill out this form, that'll give us some data that we can work with. Um, the link is there in the chat. We're up to seven now. And obviously, um, this is just we're, we're going to use it to compare, right? I mean, there's no, you could make it up if you want. Not a big deal. We'll wait for just a second till we get a few more. Now, as we get a few more responses, I'm going to show you how I can get to that data. Okay. So, first of all, I come over here. And I'm going to say, let me look at my responses. And I've showed you before, you know, it has, a, it has summary charts, which can be useful. Uh, but today, we're not talking about forms. We're talking about spreadsheets. So I'm going to go to the top of the page. And over here on the right, I have this little green icon that says View in Sheets, OK? because. For every form you create, Google is going to make a spreadsheet that imports that data, OK? Now, you can see at the beginning, what I'm going to want to do is clean this up a little bit. And that's going to give me an opportunity to go to the next section, all right? So my next section is just basics of moving around on a spreadsheet and adjusting it so it looks right. I think one of the biggest like turnoffs of spreadsheets is when you get too much stuff in there and it's and then you have to scroll way over and you're like what's going on right so number one thing is you want to make it so it looks attractive and usable for yourself okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to talk about moving around so if i were to start here you could see when i click in any cell it highlights it and my first my first movement that I can do is if I push enter, it's just going to send me down to the next level, right? And this is if I'm looking at data or if I'm adding data too. If I was adding my own line, I could just push enter and it's going to make me go down, okay? Of course, sometimes we want to go to the right. So this movement that I'm getting here is with tab. Or you could just use the arrow keys and just zap around. So I'm getting around to different cells. And that that's obviously job one, right? Navigating around on the spreadsheet. Um, so let's, let's take a look. I'm actually going to jump down to formatting data. And let's take a look at some of the, the things we have. And then we're going to use some to, to clean this up. We have a lot of the basics. The first four are you know, redo, undo, print. We can paint our format. We have different things to format currency. You can change the font. You could change the font size and have all kinds of uh, colors and things like that. And then also I like fill. So if I want to start modifying this, I'm gonna start, it's, it's good to have my timestamp which comes, but I don't really need to see that. So if I, if I look at this, I'm like, you know, it's kind of cool. I just kind of want it there on the side. I can click and you will notice the whole, the heading up here becomes highlighted. And then I can just kind of grab and slide it over. So it's just going to be there. So I remember it's there, but I don't really need it. My next item is my initials, right? And 
initials aren't too big, so I'm going to slide this over, and I'm going to actually do this with all of my columns so that I don't have, you know, too much. Now, if I want it really short, I can do this. And you notice... Maybe. It can, yes. Every, sorry. Instead of moving every column over, is there a way that you can um, shorten all columns at once? Yeah, you could get in. Um, today, I'm just doing the, like the basics, okay? But you can get in for uh, like default column widths and things like that. Yes, you can. I want. I want to show you something really quick here. You notice brushing teeth got cut off. But I don't want to forget what that was. So I'm going to I'm going to apply this to all. I'm going to highlight all of these. And I'm going to make sure that my view, um, oh heavens, is format. yeah format. I'm sorry, and I want to do text wrapping. That way, it's going to show that. And I also like this. Some of these got hidden because I zoomed in. I also like to center. And on the top, I like to fill it, you know, give it like a, so it shows as my, my thing. Now, some of these aren't going to work for data because they're words or things like that, right? So I'm just going to zap around really quick. This one, I'm going to take off the letters. Um, Just right. <laughs> you guys, what jokers. Okay. And there we go. And then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a select all and I'm just gonna center all of them just because I like it that way, right? Not that, that helps me. Now later we'll get to this and we will work with this a little bit more. Let me to erase that one. But um you could see that was kind of moving around and formatting so that I start getting something that would be useful for kids to look at, right? Now let's talk about other ways to get data. Um, I provided on the, the outline a link to this website. This is data that everybody likes, right? Like what is the average gas price? But if you wanted to make a spreadsheet you're not going to want to type all these things in, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up. I'm going to create another spreadsheet. Again, in Drive, I just come down to Google Sheets. So it's blank. You're going to notice another way that I can get data to put on a spreadsheet. On a website, I can just select, and you'll notice this this website is like a table, right? And so as I highlight these cells, they're, get, they're becoming highlighted. And I'm just going to go Control C and put them in here. Now that is something that, again, could be a great dis discussion in class. You can also import CSV or comma separated values. Um, files. And one last thing you could do if you have an Excel file. So let's say I'm here in my Google Drive and I want to look at all spreadsheets. Um, I'm going to show you what an Excel file will look like. You see this, this um, cross? That shows this is a Google Sheet. But here I have an Excel file. And it has a little Excel icon. If I wanted to, I could – oops, I didn't want to double click that. If I wanted to, I could click that, right click it, and say, I want to open this with Google Sheets. And it would open that Excel file in Google Sheets. Okay. So those would be some different ways just to get data on, on a sheet for you. I'm going to put a title on this one Gas Prices. Um, now, data is not all numbers, right? Sometimes it's important. Really, this is relevant based on where it is on the map. And so I want to show you something that uh, sometimes is kind of uh, 
eye-opening for students. I'm in my drive, and if I go down to more, I'm going to go to my Google Maps. And this is just Google Maps, but uh, my Google Maps gives you the options to do different things. You can you know, measure different distances. You can put your own markers and things like that. Now, I don't want to... I don't want to type everything in on here, but I can go here, import. And if I click import from my Google Drive, I'm like, oh, here's my gas prices list. And it is grabbing it. So when I, when I click that, it's going to say, select the columns that tell us where to put the markers. That would be the state, right? If it was specific, like it had a, a city, that would work as well. And so now I'm going to continue. Now it's going to say pick a column to use uh, the title. Yeah, I want state still. Oh no, we want we want regular. So that's we want the regular gas prices in different states. So here I'm spinning and it's importing, and now I have a layer that says gas prices. So I could share this with students, and you'll see if I if I hover over here, it's giving me. It's giving me all the data, right? The, the main one, I asked it to be regular gas, uh, but it has all the other information that was on that spreadsheet as well. And we could zoom in, we could say, man, what's it like in Iowa? Oh, I see, 205, that's convenient. That's super nice. What about Hawaii? Those guys, they're not living the dream. That's more expensive, 324. What's Nevada? 265. Texas 186, that's a huge difference. So you can see by importing data directly to a map, it gives a lot of conversation and meaning to data. So that's a way that you can take your data off of a spreadsheet and give yourself another conversation piece uh, for kids, right? I could have also done a form, right? And said like, where's your dream vacation or something like that. And you could have little dots all over the world, right? I mean, somebody's like, you know, I'd really like to go to the Ukraine. Well, it would put a little dot on Ukraine and you could put somebody's, you know, to have it title the name or whatever. So that's kind of fun, fun way to use data. Um, so let's take a look a little bit more at, um, some of the things that we can do. I'm going to come to the water use, right? Uh, well, no, let's go to the gas price because it's a long one. You know, wonder if you are looking at this and you're like, I, I want to remember that this column is regular. But when I scroll here, I'm like, oh, was that regular? Or was that diesel? And you kind of forget, right? If I highlight a row and then I go to view, I can freeze that row. But what that means is that row is going to be frozen. So even when I'm scrolling, I'm going to still have those headings. So I don't have, you know, when I get way down here to Wisconsin, I still remember what was what. And so that's that's a very useful one, right? And you could you can freeze multiple numbers of rows uh, if you want to do that. Also, as if you know, this one already has money, but you can get up here into uh, these different formatting preferences. And these are already formatted as currency, but if I just had numbers and I'm like, I want that to be money, I could click right on that and it would, you know, put the dollar sign, put the decimal points and all that, which is kind of nice, okay? Now, uh, I wanna pause and see if there are any questions about getting around a spreadsheet and or um, you know how to import maybe to the my maps or how to import data onto your spreadsheet so do we have any um, any questions about those things I hope that you're playing along and trying to you know mess with them a little bit so that you can see what what you can do I have a question about yes. So I was thinking about, um, say you took your class and you wanted to know where their families were from. 
Could you make each different one, each kid a different color? Or is it all going to be the same color on the map? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I'm going to go back to the map and I'll show you just a little bit of that. Um, come on. There it is. Present. So if I wanted to manipulate this map just a little bit, Are we back on the map? Yes. Okay, cool. So if I come here, each of these little dots, uh, this, you know, this is like a, a document, right? I have the share item up here. So you could share one map. Um, and once these points were on, you could say, now why don't you customize your point, right? So find where your point on the map is, and you can customize that. So if you had given the shares uh, option to your students, as they come here to this uh, pin, you could see we have some little icons down here. First one we have is style, and this is right where you come to your colors. So if I wanted a, uh, this red one, ooh, that's gonna change all of them. Let's just edit this one, right? So. Here I have editing my, okay, do you know what's happening? Um, since I'm the only person on this, I think it's gonna change all of them if I change the style. Um, let me see. Okay, here we go, all items in layer. No, I don't want all items. I just want, See if this will do it. No, nope, it's going to do all because I'm the only author of this. Um, but when students make their own, kids actually get into this, right? Um, they can come here and there's all these little icons that you can, they can customize it. Um, but since I placed these, I'm like the owner of these pins um, so somebody you know if somebody else added a pin they would be able to customize their own are there any other questions how to get to my maps sure from within my google drive um, i'm just going to go to new and i scroll down to more and it's just the third one down, Google My Maps. And this is just opens like, like a document, right? So you have the ability to share it, give it a title. Um, and I know we're not talking about this today, but these tools are kind of fun too. If I wanted to add a marker or a pin, you know, I'd say, yeah, you know, I went down to, I went down here to Costa Rica and it was really cool. And so I could say I want to add a pin there. I could say like, what volcanoes were there? And, and you know, it, it comes up. It's showing all kinds of stuff. Can you customize the captions? Yeah. So let me go back to this one. So if I were to make, I'm going to just drop a pin up here in British Columbia. Take that off. We'll just say Boise, Idaho. So I'm going to say I want to add this to the map. Now it's here. I can add these details. Um, I've seen teachers use it where kids will like write little essays and things like that all about it. Um, so when you add when you add a pin, you you have control over all of that just with that edit button. Any other questions about sheets before we go on? Maybe maybe like we could do a whole thing on my maps one day and we could create maps if that's something you're interested in. Okay. Uh, do you have any there? Ashley, at your place, any questions? No questions here. 
Okay. okay. I have so one more question about the sheets. How do you, are you going to get into how you can turn the data from sheets into um, information, like a like, pie chart or a... Yes, we will look chart. at charts at the end. Yes, okay. absolutely. So next, let's take a look at this uh, chart that you guys made. And I want to talk just a little bit about formulas. Um, formulas kind of can be intimidating if you don't understand uh, about them. And I'm not saying I am the expert on formulas. There are a lot of people that know tons of things uh, about this that I don't. But it is kind of fun to learn. And I just want to show you some of the basics. When you make a formula, what you're going to do is you're going to tell the sheet what you would like to do. And you see some of the basic formulas are here. If I, if I click here, right? Um, and then you tell it what set of cells you want that to apply to. So let's take a look at some of the basics. I'm going to start with uh, sum, which obviously adds up everything. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say this cell equals and then sum. And you can see it's already trying to help me. It's like oh I want to help you. Um, if I want to select a range, I'm gonna click in the first one, and then I'm gonna go here and click to the next one, and that that could select a whole range. Up here, when I'm when I'm typing the sum, though, if I'm if I'm just typing it, I'll go parentheses, and then it's gonna you watch it's gonna try to help me. I'm like, okay, here's C seven, C seven, two, kind of, there we go, H seven, and it's putting it in here for me. And that you can see now the yellow dotted line comes around that range. It has identified that. And so I'm just going to push enter. And you could see that it made a sum. Now, if if I wanted to get technical, I could say, well, you know what? A bath is really 50 gallons or you know, something like that. But right now I'm just adding up events, uh, water use events. So I might put that up here. Now, if I want to continue this same formula, a sum, you can copy all kinds of things. When I have this cell selected, if I just grab here this little box and pull it down, it is duplicating that same formula. So now, if I go specifically to here, you can see my, my formula is C8 to H8. And here it's C9 to H9. So I've just duplicated. Um, if I had something and I was like, you know, a list of people and I'm like, yeah, all these people are students, you could do the same thing with, with text. If I grab this, I'm like, all these people on this list are students, right? I could, I could do that. So grabbing this saves you a lot of time typing things in. Let's take a look at um, another formula. Maybe we don't want to use the sum. Maybe we want to use um, the average. Imagine all of these events. We had this for every day, right? So I'll just go average and now it automatically averaged everything in there um, I'm, I'm just gonna bring this over here to kind of compare so if I say I don't want to do an average I want to see how many of these actually got filled out that might be good if you had scores right like maybe there was attempts on a quiz or attempts on an assignment, you could count this each time. You could say, wow, look, this person tried six times. You're like, you know, you only tried three times when everybody else tried six times. So that's not 
really up to par. So that's how count works. Um, max sometimes is nice if you wanted to see what is the maximum value in your group of cells. Obviously, min would be lowest. Um, and you could do basic math, too. So you could say, um, you know, if I wanted to do all of these, I could do how many more did KJ have than SM? I could say equals, who is KJ? What, what, what line? 13. So I13. Minus I fourteen, and it it does the math for me, right? So you could keep a, ta a tally of how much more is one thing, you know, one set of data than another, or things like that. There are all kinds of formulas, and really, what that's all about is trying to make your data useful. Okay, that's super urgent. Um, also, I want to note down here, you do not have to have everything, you know, like hundreds of columns or hundreds of rows. If your data should be divided up, you can easily just add a sheet. And it comes up as a little tab down here. You have the options to um, rename it. So you could say, um, Maybe that one's water use on Tuesday. Maybe this one we'd make water use Monday, and so on. Um, I sincerely don't know if there's a limit on how many you can use, but like how many tabs you can go, you can go for a long ways. I know that. Um, other options in here, you'll see. Um, you can hide it. You can you can make them different colors. Uh, if you're sorting, you know you could tell students do the red one now or or whatever um, you can copy everything off of a sheet to another one you know you can duplicate things um, but I, I just want to point out it doesn't have to be you know it doesn't have to be boring so if I'm if I'm here I'm like you know I want to make this great I right. make, I like a Greek e. yeah I want to make it beautiful and nice it's so uh, I'm gonna do this that's uh, kind of too big Upper right. So uh, if I like that for all my titles, I might just go, let's do a copy that format. Let's copy that format, put it on that one. It, you know, you can make it look really nice. It doesn't have to be like, the traditional, you know, blocks, things like that. I want to pause again and make sure that you have a chance to try to create a couple of, um, try to try to use a couple of formulas because uh, that's that's really a, a powerful thing. So I want to I want to pause just a little bit and make sure that you have a chance to try to make a few formulas. Um, and remember, you can always go up here, and you can find a lot of them. And I mean, you, there are, there are really tons, right? One that's kind of interesting for uh, ESL maybe is you can make a translation page. This translates text from one page to another, and, and you'll notice as I as I hover over these formulas. It gives me a quick definition of what it does. Um, so you don't have to, you know, you don't have to memorize all of these. You can take a look and it will show you. If I'm, if I'm hovering here, some of these, I'll be honest, I don't even know. Oh, this inverse cosine of a value in radians. That's great. That, that means nothing to me, <laughs> right? But, um, 
there's a lot of a lot of formulas really programmed in here to help you out. So take a second, please, and take a look at them, and try to try to put a few uh, items into cells and try to make it do what you would like it to do, and see how that turns out. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm looking in the chat and I see, are there any suggestions for use in collecting data on reading levels for each student that would change over time? Hmm. Um, let me take a look here. I have some, oops, I don't wanna get that file. I have a couple examples of some forms that I have used in the past with teachers um, that maybe would be helpful for you uh, to, to keep data, right? So first of all, here's one. Uh, this isn't exactly what you were talking about, but it's an overtime thing, right? If you take student name and if there was a, a behavior and action taken, a lot of teachers will keep this just right up on their bookmark thing, uh, and that's useful for them to be able to document that. Um, this maybe is a little closer to what you're talking about. Um, this is a hall pass, so they'd say where they're going. If I, I think if I were making, I don't know that it's closed there, but I'm gonna close this. And that's, I think if I were making um, reading levels, I think I would just do something basic like uh, make a form that you could put on the resources tab of your Google Classroom. And share this with, with your students, right? Um, to start off, I would just say, Let's just collect the email. So it's automatically going to collect the kid's email. So you don't have to do anything. That will be important because when you get into here, you're going to have one column is going to be emails. So you could sort by kid and you would just have all each kid's thing um, together. And then you could say, like, what's the date? Make that required, and then the next one. My reading level today, and just have this. It, like uh, I don't know how you would measure it. If you wanted to put some pre-selected options, you could do multiple choice, or if you just want them to type in a number, you can just leave it short answer, and then I'd put something like. Um, what can I do to the help? What can Mr. Wade do to help? So the kid knows that I care. And then this would be a very quick form that you might consider for collecting, um, you know, collecting reading levels. And at the first, you know, you just have a few things, but imagine if you, if you put this on your Google Classroom, this is a great question, right? I mean, because data is, is super important. You could get all your kids over time. Um, even if you, if you wanted to make it customized, you could, you know, you could have this here. 
I'm just gonna add a question and say, hey, your name. And I, you know, if you have your kids already, just have them or I do a drop down so they can just pick one and then just choose, right? It's like me, Corbin, um, Lana, Marco, whatever. You just really quickly type all the kids. And then when they come to this, I'll show you what it's going to look like. That, that, I kind of like this one better than just having the email, right? Because it customizes it. So when they go to it and they're filling it out, they're going to be like, okay, who is this? Obviously, I'd have this up front. I'll be like, this is Nate. I select this. I'm like, okay, Nate, I'm here. I'm. What's my reading level? My reading level is 10. That's great, Nate. And it's 4th of, of August. And I fill that baby out. Boom, it's good. Oh, I got to require it. What can I do to help? Nothing, man. You can't do anything. You can't do anything for me. And so there, uh, there I have my response, right? And it's already going to be if I want it to be in a spreadsheet. Let's create that spreadsheet. And so here it is. Again, it shows me what time that happened, the date. I didn't really need this date, I guess, because it has a timestamp, right? Took my email, whether I wanted that or not. Uh, I think this is a good idea because that would uh, prohibit, I'm not saying this would happen all the time, but like, I don't know, let's say one student wanted to jump in there and say, oh, wow, Mr. Waits reading level zero, you know, it, you, you would see who actually typed it in. So this is kind of like a verification on who typed it in. And it shows my stuff and then um, later I could just do, I could just move these babies around and, you know, I could get it so my name is right next to my reading level and the date and then I could start making the charts. And that's what we're going to finish with. That was a great question, Sarah. Thank you. Very appropriate. I I found out that if I keep revising that same Google form, it keeps running the same spreadsheet. It does. It? And that also will, you know, so let's say I delete date. Date is still going to exist for these first few, you know what I'm saying? Like if, if the form existed with date when it was filled out, it's going to keep that. So if you're revising it, it's going to end up getting a lot of columns. So it's kind of a good idea to really plan what information you want to collect right up front and have as few changes as possible on the form over time. That's a really, that was Karen, right? Yes. Yeah, that was a great, that's a great comment because that can be frustrating. If you go to get on your spreadsheet and you're like, wait, what's going on? There's some of them have this and then some of them don't or whatever. Um, I use this for online attendance and seeing oh, that, that history of the kids who showed up or didn't show up during the spring semester was really helpful. Very awesome. One, one thing, that's a great uh, tool. One thing I would suggest, if you don't want this on, like for example, I use this with the certificates that you get for attending here, right? I don't want to just leave it on because in, you know, uh, it may not be accurate data if somebody was like, just some random person's like filling it out and getting certificates. So you can always toggle this and then it will not allow uh, responses. So if you get to a time like, okay, hey, thanks for attending class online. Please go ahead and check the attendance. And then you go, boom, now it's open, they can check it. And then five minutes you go like that and then it's done. So you get a real accurate view. That's a that's another great application, Karen. Wonderful idea. Nate, we have a question here. Okay. In uh, sheets, when we see our data and it's in columns, say we have a multiple choice spreadsheet and we want the column to calculate how many A's. We want the percentage of A's or the percentage of correct answers. Is there a formula that would calculate that for us? Oof. Um, yes. I'm not going to say I'm the master of this, but I believe it would be true. So you could, what I think you would have to do would be, you'd say like equals 
True. I, I honestly am not. True. A. It might be parentheses A. I'm not sure. No, that's not. That's not right. There, there is a way. That's a little bit more complex. Um, you could get how many things were filled out with the count formula. You know, so like how many answers, and then maybe, um, uh, you know, I don't know. And it's something really useful that a lot of people overlook. If I wanted to say how many people answered one, control F, and then you just, just push down, enter, you could see the number one was used 47 times on this sheet, right? So if I'm going to come over here, I'm like, oh, I really want to find Kansas. If I go control F, Kansas, it'll give me Arkansas, because that those letters are in there, right? And you can see it's highlighted, so that's a quick way to to see things. Or I can just say, bring me to the next one. There it is. So I, I'm like, what was the first one? Oh, Arkansas. Second one, Kansas. So that is useful for jumping around. Um, I'm I'm going to say there is a way to do that, like how many A's there were. Um, truthfully, I think I would just go to the form because you could go right to your questions. Um, let's let's see what I was doing with your, you know, so like if we were looking at this form, if you're looking at one specific question, you could just be like, let's see here, here's Bath, right? I, I can look or I, I can look at the summary and it's going to give me these charts and pie charts and stuff like that. So if you're just wondering about one, you you know you would look here and it'd be A, B, C, D. You could get a chart really quickly, just pre-built. So speaking of charts, right? Uh, it was asked about. I'm going to delete a lot of this random stuff that I put about making charts uh, on Google Sheets. I'm just going to delete that because it's got letters. Okay. So if I wanted to make a chart, it's not showing here right now because I've got this enlarged, but if I come over here, I can find uh, insert chart, okay? And so if I really like this, I'm like, hmm, how many, let's just highlight these. These are my important pieces of data. I highlight it and then I say, let's make a chart. And it's making charts for me, right? So here, it already put the data that was off of my screen. Let me move that. So it has the initials, and it's got some of the different things on it, right? Bathing versus this one. Don't look at the green. I'm going to actually move it over so that I'm frozen on that. We're kind of crowded because we're zoomed in. Um, but you could see I can really customize and set this up. So if I want to customize it, um, I can make a legend. Um, I can do all, you know, I can switch the rows and columns. I want to use row one as my header. I already did that. Use row column B as my labels. I've done that. So I've got bath versus initials. So I'm looking here. Okay, we got 20 baths happening by SG. I got NW. Not a lot of bathing happening. It's making uh, a really nice chart. I could come up here also and say, I don't really want this kind of chart. I want, you know, a pie chart. Or if you want to get really awesome, you could come down here to the bottom and, you know, make it kind of three dimensional. And there are even some custom ones, like little speedometers and things like that. So you're like, if I wanted my data to be a speedometer, I could be like, wow, SG's bath speeds off the charts, right? Um, so these are these are kind of fun and different ways to see the data. Um, and then, of course, you can change. You can customize the colors, the titles. Um, we have the three dots here, which allow us to do quite a few things. I could download this as an image. 
if I wanted to like tweet it out or send it in an email, I could publish it and I would publish it online. You could just copy it so that it could be inserted into like a Google Doc or things like that. And then of course uh, you can add the alt text so that it is uh, compliant. Um, so looking at charts, I want to give you a chance to, to do that, please. Um, all you have to do is, and you can see they're like, they're resizable and everything, right? I can move it around. Just select the data you want to play with and then come up to the top to the little insert chart button. And then you're good. While you're doing that, I'm just going to mention a couple more uh, little things that are pretty, pretty fun. Um, oh, so, uh, I'm yeah, looking on here to show how to publish. So if I wanted to publish just this chart, I'm just going to say publish the chart. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it uh, like a, a link. And it, it'll put, I'm not really going to do it because I don't want to put, well, I mean, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? So I'm going to publish it, and it gives me this link. So I could share that. And anybody that went online, you could see, oh, look, this is the bath speeds of Northern Nevada, right? And so you just share the link. And it's like a little, it's like a super quick mini um, website that gets built. And those are, those are useful because as you update it, it's going to update. So this one might be kind of a cool one. Like you could share, I don't know, like it depends on how competitive you want people to be. You know, it could be like, you got to read a thousand books this semester. And as they add them, you know, you could just have the sum of books read and it could be like their little speedometer. And you'd be like, oh, good job. TMW, you've read so many books. Your speedometer is going faster than ever. Uh, that might be a fun way to use that. Um, yeah. Do you know if you can put one of those charts in a slide? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I just deleted that one. Let me let me make it again. Um, so if I go like this, and I want to make a chart, and let's just make let's just make a nice calm chart. No, let's not. Let's make something cool like, I like the speedometers one, okay? So um, let's imagine I customized and it was just the way I liked it. Come on. If I go to the three dots, um, I could just say copy chart. And that might be, that might be one nice way. Let me go to, let's make a slide deck. Oops, not. So here, I just pushed Control V to paste. So I can either link it to the thing or to the spreadsheet, or I could just paste it unlinked. And there it is, right? Another way would be to download it as a PNG. But this is this is usable, and you can see I can I can adjust the size and all kinds of things like that. And so you could definitely put that in there. Now, if I had if I had made it linked to the spreadsheet. It would also continue to update itself on the slide deck, so that would be that would be useful too, because then you could, um, you know, have have a slide deck where everybody went to see their own data or something like that, right? That's a good question. So we're five minutes left. I hope you're building a few um, charts. You've tried a couple formulas and play around with the formatting. Uh, and then let me know, let's, let's finish up with the uh, last five minutes of any questions that you might have. And we'll see if I can answer them. I had a question. So my, on the maps, I tried to copy the data and then put it into the maps, but it just didn't, I, I'm missing something. So um, 
to get the data onto a map, uh, what you're going to do, I'm going to close this one, and we're just going to start from scratch. So we come, we create a map, right, by going to More, My Maps. And then the way I imported it from the spreadsheet was with this Import button. And I can import from any CSV file. Um, I can import from a lot of things, but I'm just going to say my Google Drive. And then I did the gasoline, right? So here's gas prices. I select that spreadsheet. And then this is where it starts asking. So I, I want to place the position based on state. And I want to make the title. All, I put regular because then the price of regular gas will be shown as the title of each pin and then finish, and now you could see it's spinning. It's uploading that data from the spreadsheet, and it is now pasted. And that little square thing that says untitled map, that little box shows up on your map when you pull it up? Yes, this, is, this actually is like a, it's like a document, right? I have the okay. options to share it with others, um, these, little, these little dots kind of give you some of the options. Um, it can be embedded like on a website. Um, you can print it out. Um, there are different things you can do. And if you really want to get in depth on this, you could you can say, you know, I want to see a data table and it's going to show all the data that was put on the map. Um, and you can also add multiple layers. So maybe I could have one layer could be mid-range gas. One layer could be diesel, um, something like that, right? There's There are different ways to use it. You can do multiple layers on it, which is kind of useful. Did that answer your question? Yes, yes. thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I know we're almost out of time, but um, Sherry and Linda both have a couple of questions. The sure. first one is, how can our data or charts be loaded into a YouTube presentation? And then um, remind us where we can find the charts icon on Sheets. Excellent. And then I also will make sure that I, I'm going to, as I answer those, I'm going to also put the link for your certificate today. Let me make sure that's open for business, and then I will get to the questions. Yes, it is accepting responses. Okay, so first of all, the, the chart um, icon, I'm going to actually put this down to 100%. So on, on your screen, you're going to see it's right here in my circle. When I zoom in, it disappeared. And so I just had to come here to the three dots that said more, but it's still right there. And I just clicked insert chart. So I think that was Linda's question, right? Um, now, Sherry's question would be a little bit more complicated. If you wanted to show your charts in a YouTube presentation, for example, um, what you would have to do maybe would be get different charts. Like, I've got this one here. And just for the sake of time, let's imagine that, um, let's imagine these are different charts. I'm going to go copy. Um, let's, just, let's just duplicate this, right? So let's imagine all of these were different charts. And, and so we had this. If I really wanted to get this on a YouTube presentation, Sherry, what I would do would be I would present this, right? And I would probably do a screencast of it. So I would do my screencast. So I'm recording what's on my screen. And then as I'm narrating what's going on, then I'm like, OK, so here we are today talking about bathing and showering. And we can see all these charts that look exactly the same because they are. But if I were changing it about, it would they would be different charts and I could be giving narrations about what each chart meant and the important points of data that were there. Does that make sense? OK. 
Okay. Are there any other questions that I can help with before we go? Okay, thank you, Sherry. If there are any other questions, I would love to help. Um, I do just want to say thank you to everybody for your time today. I really appreciate it. And um, I hope that, you know, I like I said at the beginning, I do not consider myself a Google Sheets like Jedi or, or anything like that. But I do know that as I continue to learn, I found a few things that are very helpful. Um, I think if I were a teacher, one of the first things I would do would be get all of my students' names and just make a generic sheet so that you could have that and copy it over and over and over, right? And so whether you're putting attendance, oh, dude, I, I know some people left, but I'm going to show you one thing that's super useful. I should have showed this. I feel terrible. This is the greatest. Okay. Let me, let me present, and I'm going to show you the greatest thing. This is so great. It's basic, but so useful on any sheet. So somebody tell me if you're seeing my sheet. Let me, let me zap over here. Okay, yes, okay. So let's say we're here. Let's say these state names were kid names. So useful. If you just select, like if you just select here and you're like, I want to insert a checkbox and then grab that blue button and just pull it down. What that does is like, so if you're checking in, you're like, you know, we were talking about attendance and stuff. You could just, and then you, all you have, you have to do is check it. And it's just like check off, like, did they do the discussion or did they, you know, attendance or whatever. That is a super easy way. I know back in the day, I would like put an X in the column or something like that. Check boxes, again, I just went insert, check box, and that is, that's a very useful thing. So please don't overlook that one. <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys are super friendly. I really appreciate your time. Uh, please make sure that you get your certificate so that you can uh, upload that and get your credit for your, you know, professional learning. Um, everybody needs to document what, you know, all the important things you're doing. And I, I just really appreciate your time today. And I hope that uh, at any time, if you have a question, you feel uh, comfortable reaching out either on Twitter or uh, with an email. And I'd be happy to, to help you work through and, and figure these things out. So thank you so what much. Is, what is your email? I will put it in the search. It's nwait at nwrpdp.com. And my Twitter is, uh, so they're there in the search bars. And then what are the logistics on what we need to do to get our certificate? Um, just go ahead and I'll, I'll put that link again in the chat box and you just fill out a form and it will create a PDF certificate for you for today's session and that will be emailed to you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, well like always I'll hang out for a little bit if anybody has any last questions but if not I really appreciate your time today and I hope you guys take care and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.